in this question, we're given a signal in the frequency domain and we're asked to find the signal in the time domain. In other words, we're asked to find the inverse Fourier transform. So if we look at the table of Fourier transforms, try to find something similar to that, and we look in both columns, Conveniently, we find this in the frequency domain column, which resembles that almost exactly. So all we need to do is identify the value of this constant a. So we have a squared plus omega squared here, and here we have 9 plus omega squared. So from that, we can say, well, a squared is equal to 9, so a has to be equal to square root of 9. We'll take the positive value of a as 3. So now I can rewrite this as 2 times 3 over 3 squared plus omega squared. And that resembles that. So we don't need any scaling. So it's all we need to do now is to read that off as our time domain signal. So x t is e to the minus 3 absolute value of t. So that's your answer. That's your time domain signal. The question asked for that for a specific value of time. So we need to plug that 1.4 into there. So I can say x of 1.4 simply e to the power minus 3 into 1.4. And putting that in your calculator, that gives you 0 0.015. And that, that's how you would answer a question like that. You would try to find your signal in your Fourier transform table, so you either know that these two form a Fourier pair or you look it up. In this case, it's convenient. We didn't have to use the symmetry property because we found it in the correct domain. So f of omega, x of omega, we didn't have to do any symmetry. We also, it was convenient that the 6 happened to be 2 times 3, so we didn't need to do any scaling. So we could, if you, we could use that immediately without any uh, manipulation. So that, that's how you would answer a question like that.